Surprise! Um, Mr. D'Souza here. Uh, I'm going to be going over the practice problems for your elimination lesson. Um, all right, so this is what's going to happen. Um, I know that you had some options on how you're, you could choose the problems that you wanted to do. So I believe you had to do question one and then choose one from A, B, and C. So I'm going to go through all of them. This is probably going to be a longer video because this method takes a bit of time. Uh, so you can skip through the video to make sure that you can see the problems that you chose. All right. So without further ado, let's begin. All right. So for this, uh, actually, before we can get there, uh, let's just kind of review something. So solving systems of equations is essentially if I gave you, let's say, 3x plus y equals 7, and let's say like 5x minus 3 equals 4. Essentially, if I asked you to solve this, I'm basically telling you to find the values of x and y that satisfy both equations. So in the end, you should get a coordinate point, x comma y, an x value and a y value that satisfy both equations. So previously, you already learned how to use the um, substitution method, which is essentially you isolate one of the variables, either x or y, which ever, or one is like more convenient, and then substitute that value into the other. Um, and then you learned previously the elimination method, which is essentially, essentially eliminating one variable using algebraic properties um, so that you can easily solve for the other and then substitute back in to get your new value. Oh, my cat's going a little crazy right now. <clears throat> Anyways, so on the right-hand side, I have the steps that we did with Ms. Fu. Um, so very briefly, um, you want to write both equations in standard form. Uh, two, determine which variable is easier to eliminate. The coefficients must be the same. Um, if they're not the same, multiply the equations, solve the equations by adding or subtracting, plug back in what you find with the other variable, and check your solution. All right, so we're going to do the first question. Uh, for this question, you can use either elimination or substitution. Greg says that they're, uh, sorry, that the two systems of equations shown below have the same solutions. All right, so essentially what um, this person is saying is that the solution for these two, so the coordinate point that satisfied both of these uh, equations, is the same one for this one, okay? Determine and state whether you agree with Greg or, uh, and justify your answer. So on the regions, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of give you some leniency on what method you can use to solve systems. Um, sometimes you'll see it's easier to use substitution, elimination, and you're soon gonna learn that there's a way to graph as well. I believe you actually already saw that earlier. Um, so one quick thing you wanna do is if you are trying to use elimination, um, like what the steps say, after they're written in standard form, which all of them are to the best of their ability, you wanna see if any of the coefficients match. So I'm looking at the x values, there's an eight and a 12, uh, a nine and a five, that doesn't really help me. And then there's a whole hot mess over here. So you might wanna say, you know what, elimination is probably not the best method. Um, and the only other method that we know at this point is substitution. For any of, the, any of these equations, is it easy to solve for one of the variables? So if you look at this one, can't we just solve for y by dividing by negative 8.5 on both sides? And then we have y, then you can solve for x. So I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to use substitution for this question because I believe that it's easier. Now, if you used elimination, that's awesome. It's going to, it will work. You're just going to get a lot of fractions, which is totally cool. All right. So I want to solve for y with the, uh, the second system. So I got negative. 8.5y is equal to negative 51. I'm going to divide both sides by negative 8.5. If that's the inverse operation, you might be saying, Marcia, what do we do now? Well, take out your calculator. If I can open it. Yeah. Okay. And then we got negative 8.5. I know the answer. I lied. It's a negative 51. <laughs> negative 51 divided by negative 8.5. And we get, whoa, 
that's actually a really nice number. So we get that y is equal to six. Now, super awesome, because now to find my x value, I can substitute back into the first one, right? So we solved for y here. Now we're going to substitute y in here and see what our x value is. So we got 8x plus 9 times 6, right? Because our new y value is 6 equals 48. Okay, so we get 8x plus 54 is equal to 48. My cat is going literally insane right now. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract 54, subtract 54. Yo, what's my cat doing? <laughs> my cat's literally going crazy. Um, and we're going to get whoop, 8x equals negative 6. To get x by itself, we use inverse operations. So we're going to do the opposite of multiplying by 8, which is divide by 8. Whoop. And then we get x equals, now negative 6 over 8, we can simplify. Um, you'll get negative 3 over 4. We can divide both top and bottom by 2. So the solution to the first system is negative three over four, comma, six. Now you might be saying, Mr. D'Souza, this is a fraction. That's okay. Fractions are numbers too. Um, you're gonna see fractions a lot, um, especially when we get more into the word problems um, that deal with systems. All right, so let's get back to the question and figure out what we're trying to answer. Greg says that both of these systems have the same solution, meaning he's saying that this coordinate point, negative three, over four comma six is a solution to that first system and the second system, okay? <coughs> so I know negative three over four comma six is the solution to the second system. So let's go back to what you learned. I believe in your lesson one, if you wanna check to see if a solution, I'm sorry, if to see if a coordinate point is a solution to a system, substitute in. So we're gonna do this twice. So I'm also going to do it in a different color because it makes it um, a lot easier. Sorry if you can hear my cat. My cat's literally going crazy right now for whatever reason. All right. Hi. <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, so we're going to do this system first. So we got eight times. Now my X is negative three over four. Remember, I'm just plugging in these numbers. Hi, Riley. Um, whoops. Doop. Okay. Plus nine times my y value is six equals 48. Now, I'm going to show you how to do this on your calculator. And then when I do this um, after, I'm just going to do the answer just to just for time purposes. So um, I'm going to clear my calculator. Um, so we got eight times now alpha y equals enter. I can do negative three divided by four. Whoops. My bad. My cat is literally distracting me. Um, negative three over four times plus nine times six, right? Plus nine times six, right? This is the equation. Now, over here, it says that it equals 48. Well, if it equals 48, then that means that this coordinate point is a solution. So let's check it out. And of course, it works, which is super awesome. So we get that the left-hand side equals 48. And the right-hand side also equals 48, which means that this coordinate point is a solution to that equation. Now we got to check this equation, because if this solution is a solution to this equation and this equation, 
then it's a solution to the system. Therefore, Greg is right. So we're so close. So again, we're just going to substitute in. So we got 12 times x. My x value is negative 3 fourths, negative 3 over 4, plus 5 times 6. And hopefully, that equals 21. <laughs> okay, so quickly, I'm just going to tell you, just so we don't waste some time, put that on the calculator like we just did. And you're also going to get 21 equals 21. Now, do we agree or disagree with Greg? We agree with Greg. So since, since negative 3 fourths comma 6 is a solution to both systems, um, then they have the same solution. The same solution, okay? So just to reiterate, for the second system, I was able to solve for x and y. So I know for a fact that negative 3 fourths comma 6 is a solution to the second system. But Greg wants to know if both systems have the same solution. So I checked to see if the solution, negative 3 fourths comma 6, was also the solution for the first system. And in purple, you can see that it checks out. All you need to do to check if a coordinate point is a solution substitute it in. If you get something that looks nice, like, like 48 equals 48, or 3 equals 3, something that makes sense, 21 equals 21, then it's a solution. Okay? Awesome. Okay, so now I'm going to start going through um, these questions. Um, now, um, we want you to use elimination for all these. Now, you might say, hey, Mr. D'Souza, I think it's a lot easier to use substitution. That's great. At some point, you'll have more freedom of what method you want to choose. But for now, you, you need to practice these different methods because you're going to learn that some methods are better than others in specific situations. Um, so for example, on this one, elimination is awesome because, um, well, we'll get there. Okay, so I'm going to do the question A's. So step one, write both equations in standard form. Now they are in standard form. I have all my X's lined up all my y's lined up, and then all my constants lined up. Determine which variable to eliminate. Now, the easy way to know is if the coefficients ignore the sign. So ignore if it's positive or negative. I just want you to see the number. If the numbers are the same, you're good to go. So for example, the coefficient of x is 1. The coefficient of x is also negative 1. But do you see that in blue, the numbers are the same? That's awesome. The point is you want to eliminate one of the variables. So check this out. Since the operations are opposite, so this is a positive one and this is a negative one. If I add both of these equations, positive 1x plus negative 1x is zero. It goes away. So now we're just left with one variable. So check this out. I'm going to add like normal. 3 plus negative y is 2y. 13 plus negative 5 is 8. Um, there you go. I need to solve for y. You see how there's only one variable? We know how to solve with one variables. So we're up to step 3. Well, actually, we're up to really step 3 and a half. We've got to solve. So I'm going to divide by 2 on both sides, and I'm going to get that y. Whoops, actually, let me not do it over here. We're going to get that y is equal to 8 divided by 2, which is 4. Um, I'm going to let you know the reason why I'm looking over here is I have my notes just to make sure I don't make a mistake. Um, because if you make one small silly mistake, like you add wrong, you multiply wrong, whatever, um, you'll be stuck on these problems forever. 
um, when I was going over these problems myself, I made one mistake on a later problem, which I'll point out. Um, and I just couldn't figure out why I was doing the wrong thing. And it winds up that I was just adding wrong. You know, so we want to be, I want to be very, very, very careful. Anywho, my cat's going crazy. So now we have y. Remember, we want an x comma y. So we know that part of the solution is y equals 4. Well, to find x, now all we have to do is plug or substitute this back in. So you can choose any equation. So if y equals 4, I'm going to use the top one for fun. Okay? So I'm going to rewrite it. x plus 3. But I know now that y is 4. So I can substitute in 4 equals 13. 4 times 3 equals 12. Bringing everything down. I'm going to solve for x. The inverse operation of adding 12 is subtracting 12. Boop. That subtracts to 0, and you're left with x equals positive 1. Now, I'm not done because you need to write it like a coordinate point. So my x value is 1, my y value is 4. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you how to check your work, but I'm not going to do it for every question because it's, this, this video is going to wind up being an hour long. Okay? So here's a model on how to check your work. Okay? Just like any time we're solving equations, to check your work is just you just substitute back in. So I know my x values are 1, my y values are 4. So I got 1 plus 3 times 4. Does that equal 13? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. And does 13 equal 13? It absolutely does. Done with that. Let's do um, another color. Okay. So we're going to do the second equation. So negative, oh, this is a bad color. All right. So we got negative, what's my x value? 1 minus my y value is 4. Does that equal negative 5? Negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. Does negative 5 equal negative 5? It absolutely does. Okay. So that's just question 1. Um, we're going to move on to question uh, the second question of A. So if you notice both A questions, um, you'll see that the coefficients were the same. You didn't have to do anything special, um, which is super awesome. All right. So write both equations in standard form. Are they in standard form? Yes, because all my x's are lined up, all my y's are lined up on one side, and on the other side, all my constants are lined up. Okay, now we want to figure out which variable to, uh, sorry, which, yeah, which variable to eliminate. And the way that you do that is you check to see if there are any constants that match, so any numbers. So three and five are not the same. Two and two are the same. That's awesome. So now you need to ask yourself, do I need to add both equations to get rid of the y or do I subtract? Well, let's think. If you add both of these, these equations, 2 plus 2 is 4. That doesn't get rid of anything. But if you subtract 2 minus 2, so 2 minus 2, that gives you 0 and it gets rid of the y. So we're going to subtract. So you got to be super careful when you subtract. So I want you to watch how I do this. 3 minus negative 5 is a positive 8. If you don't know, don't be a hero. You got to use your calculator. 2y minus 2y, so something minus itself, is nothing. So that goes away. Equals 12 minus negative 4. That's the same thing as 12 plus 4, which is 16. Now you should be like, wow, I'm getting there because I got rid of my variable. Okay, so now I can solve for x. So the inverse operation of multiplying by 8 is dividing by 8. So we're going to do that. So when we divide by 8, you're just left with x equals 16 divided by 8, which is 
two. Awesome. Okay. So solved. We got X, but now you need Y. So to get Y, substitute back into one of the equations. Doesn't matter which one. Choose the one that's probably easier for you. Me, I like to avoid fractions and negative numbers because I know that I'm just going to make a mistake sometimes if I don't use a calculator. Okay. So you always want to use a calculator and you always want to be careful. So I'm going to choose this first one. Again, it does not matter. So we got three X, but X is two. So I can replace X with two plus two Y equals 12. Okay. Three times two is six. I'm going to bring down my two Y equals 12. Okay. I want to solve for Y. So I'm going to get Y by itself. So subtract six on both sides. Bam. Two Y is equal to 12 minus six, which is six. Divide by two on both sides. And we get that Y equals six divided by two is three. Now, are we done? And the answer is, nah, we're not done because we have to write as a coordinate point. So our final answer is two comma three. Now, for the sake of time, I'm not going to check my work. I'm gonna tell you it's right. However, if you wanna check your work, all you need to do is substitute in two for X, three for Y into both equations, and just make sure that you get um, equal quantities at the end. So for example, in the other question, when we substitute back in, we got the same numbers in the end, okay? Okay, B. B, 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 B. Okay, these were a little bit different. Um, and for some reason, this is the question that I made a mistake on. Um, and it's because I was being super, super, super silly with how I was going about doing this. Okay, so we're gonna take it step by step. I'm gonna make sure that I don't make the same mistake. Okay, step one, write equations in standard form. They're both in standard form. My X's are lined up, my Y's are lined up. So remember part A, it was a little bit easier because we had same coefficients. Now we don't. So if you notice, my coefficients for my X values are not the same, one is two and one is six. The coefficients of my Y values are three and five, those are not the same. So I gotta make it the same. And the only way you can do that is by multiplying one of the equations by a number, a convenient number. So, you could do this multiple ways, but we're gonna to try to make it the easiest way. Can I multiply this first equation so that it matches the second equation? I can. If you notice, if I multiply this whole top equation by three, three times two is six. So my sixes match. But remember how I said, that when you subtract equations, it's a little bit more complicated because you have to be very careful how you're subtracting. I like to add. So when I use elimination, I like to try to make sure that my coefficients are opposites. So instead of just getting six, I want it to be negative six. And the way to do that is multiply by a negative number. So I'm gonna multiply each term by a negative three. So negative three times two x is negative six x. Negative three times positive three is negative nine. Why? Now, this is usually where I make a mistake. I always forget that you're distributing to everything. So negative three times positive 12 is negative 36. Okay, and now I'm just gonna rewrite my equation on the bottom. Six X minus five Y equals eight. Now watch this, my X coefficients are the same, but they're opposites. It's nice that they're opposites because all I have to do now is add, okay? There's a lot less worrying about adding integers. So when you add a negative and a positive of the same number, that's zero, it goes away, okay? So when we add these two, we get nine, negative nine plus negative five, which is negative 14 Y. And negative 36 plus eight is negative 28. 
divide by negative 14, whoops, on both sides. And you get y equals positive 2. Negative 28 divided by negative 14 is positive 2. Okay, how do we get our new our x value? Yeah, just substitute back in. So you want to pick the one that's the easier one for you. So to me, I like the first equation because the numbers are smaller. So 2x plus 3 times now y is 2, right? Equals 12. We get 2x plus 3 times 2 is 6 equals 12. Subtract 6 on both sides. And you get 2x, let me move my mouse, 2x equals 12 minus 6, which is 6. Divide by 2 on both sides. And you get x equals 3. We're done? Absolutely not, because we need to write it as a coordinate point. So my x, ooh, yellow looks nice on this. x is 3, and my y is 2. If you wanted to check your work, substitute in 3 for x, 2 for y, and you'll get equal quantities at the end, just like our first example. Okay. Moving on. All righty. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. D'Souza, for the second B question, can't I just use substitution? Can't I now, oops, can't I now just replace this x with this whole piece? Yeah, that's what I would do right now. However, the directions ask you to use elimination, so we can't. Okay, so what we're gonna have to do is the following. We need to make sure that it's written in standard form. Is it written in standard form? Are all my x's lined up and my y's lined up? It looks like it, but check out where the equal sign is. The equal sign needs to line up as well, because all your x's and y's need to be on one side of the equal sign, and all of your constants are on the other side. So let's do the following. I'm going to rewrite my first equation as the following. x plus 3y equals 8. Ooh, I want to make this smaller. Awesome. All right. Next, what I want to do is the following. I would like to rewrite this so that my x's and y's are on one side and my constant is on the other. So I want my 4y to be on the other side. So the inverse operation is minus 4y. So I'm going to subtract 4y on both sides. And you're going to get the following. x minus 4y equals negative 6. Now, if you check this out, um, do any of my coefficients match? Yeah, the coefficients of my x values are both 1. Since they're the same, I can't add them. 1 plus 1 is 2. So one way you could go about doing this is subtract both equations. So I'm actually going to just move this over. Awesome. I'm going to subtract both equations so I can get rid of my x's. Okay. So watch how I do this. One minus one is zero. Boom, goes away. Three minus negative four is positive seven y, okay? Eight minus negative six is positive 14. If you're like, wait, Mr. D'Souza, how did you get that? Use your calculator. If I do three, minus negative four, you get the following, you get seven. Um, and if you continue on um, and you do all that, um, you can always just check your calculator. All right, so we can divide by seven on both sides and we get y equals two. Uh, next thing that we're going to do is the following. If we have y and we want to get x, well, you got to substitute it back into one of the equations. So I like to use the easier one. In my opinion, the first, uh, sorry, the second one is already solved for x. So we can just replace y with 2. Whoop. So we're going to replace y with 2. 
x equals 4 times 2, which is 8, minus 6. And then we get x equals 2. Now, am I done? I'm absolutely not done because I need to write it as a coordinate point. Boom, 2, comma, 2. Okay. So up to the last two questions. Okay. Uh, these are not necessarily harder. They do have bigger numbers. It's going to get a little messy. Um, but this kind of mixes everything. The coefficients are not going to be the same, and it's all out of order. So check this out. Uh, I need to first write them in standard form. So my x's need to be on one side, my y's need to be on the other. So for the first equation, I need this negative 5y to go to the other side. The inverse of negative 5y is positive 5y. So I'm going to add positive 5y to both sides. And you're left with this. 6x plus 5y equals 300. Okay. And then for my other equation, we get 3x minus 285 equals uh, 7y. I'm going to do the work over here just so that you can actually see how I'm getting all this. Equals negative 7. I want to get um, my y's on my left-hand side and my constants on the right. So I can add 285 on both sides. And you're left with the following. 3x equals negative 7y plus 285. But now I need to get my y on the other side. So the inverse of minus 7y is plus 7y. And I'm left with, I'm going to write it over here, in the yellow, so it matches. Um, now I got the following. 3x. Now I have my plus 7y equals 285. Here's a little trick if you haven't noticed this yet. If you want to move things to the other side of the equation, all you do is just change the sign. So I want to move this 285 to the other side. So I put it on the other side, and I made it positive. I wanted to move this negative 7y to the other side. So I moved it to the other side and made it positive. You just flipped the sign. Okay. Now you might be saying, well, Mr. D'Souza, what can we do now? Well, we need to make sure one of our constants match. Okay. So, sorry, coefficients match. So my x values have 6 and 3. They don't match. My y values have 5 and 7. Um, they don't match. So now we're trying to figure out what number we can multiply to one of the equations. So I notice that I can multiply three by a number to get six, and that's two. So one way of doing this, okay, is just multiply the second equation, you guessed it, two. So, boop, boop, times two. So I'm going to rewrite everything because when you're solving systems, you've gotta be, as organized as you can. So we got 6x plus 5y equals 300. And then when you multiply by 2, 3 times 2 is 6x. Yes, they match. 7 times 2 is positive 14y. And then 285 times 2 is 570. Just want to check my notes to make sure I'm good. Of course I'm good. Um, so now what we got to do is we need to use a elimination. How can I get rid of 6x and 6x? Do I want to add them? No. 6x plus 6x is 12x. Okay. But if you subtract them, 6x minus 6x is 0. So that's all we got to do. 6x, we're going to subtract both equations. I'm also going to use a different color. Again, I want to be as organized as I can. 6x minus 6x is 0, so that goes away. 5 minus 14y is negative 9y. Use a calculator. Don't do this in your head. 300 minus 570 is negative 270. Beautiful. I got rid of my x. I'm going to solve for y. 
divide by negative nine on both sides, and you get y, whoops, you're going to get y equals, let me just rewrite this. You're gonna get y equals 30. What a beautiful number. Okay. Now, I got y, now I gotta get my x. All right, so pick an equation that's easy for you to solve. Now, any equation that's on this screen right now, you could use because they're all equivalent. That's why elimination works, right? Um, but let's use one of the ones in the original because I think one of them is gonna be easier. We wanna solve for x. Do you see how the first one is already kind of solved for x? So we got six x equals 300 minus 5y. Well, I know what y is. y is 30. So I'm going to replace my y do, boo, boo, with 30. And you get 6x equals uh, 5 times 30 is 150. So we get 300 minus 150. We get 6x equals 300 minus 150 is 150. Divide by six on both sides, and you get x equals uh, 25. Right? Yep. Awesome. Am I done? No, nope. because your solution is a coordinate point. So I'm going to rewrite it as my x value is 25, my y value is 30. Now, to check your work, literally on your calculator. Substitute 25 for x and 30 for y into both equations, and you will see that they work. They satisfy both equations. All right, so last but not least, and listen, if you stayed this long in the video, very happy. I know this is a lot. I know this is going to be a very long video. Elimination is probably the longest method, but when it comes to actually real life stuff, which you're going to wind up doing, believe in the next lesson believe in the next lesson or two. Um, real life is not like nice numbers all the time, right? You're going to have big numbers and sometimes elimination is going to be probably the easiest thing for you to do. Um, so I appreciate uh, you sticking out if you stayed this long in this video. Um, yeah, actually, um, if you comment me um, on Google Classroom, um, the word elimination with a smiley face, I'll give you like an extra point um, for um, on your grade book. Okay, I'll give you some extra credit. All right, last but not least, wanna solve this. We gotta write it in standard form. Now, if you notice, the first one is actually written in standard form, it's just reversed. So I'm just gonna flip everything. So this is a negative seven X, so I'm gonna write negative seven X. This is a negative 20 Y. Uh, and negative 14. Ooh. Uh, I'm going to have to move this over. Um, and then we got 10y. Now, remember how I said an easy way when you want to just move things around in equations, you just move them and negate the sign. So if I move a positive 4 to the other side, it's going to be negative 4. If I move a positive 2x to the other side, it's going to be negative 2x. And remember, this was a positive 10. So that's how we got this. Do, 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 do. Gonna move this over here. Awesome. So now we're gonna solve. Um, all right. So we want to look at the coefficients. Determine which one you want to eliminate. Now, sometimes it's a little complicated to figure out what you want to eliminate. Let's pretend I wanted to eliminate x. Right. That means I have to figure out what to multiply to neg negative two to get a negative seven. I can't think of any whole number that works, right? Um, same thing with negative seven. Negative seven times some really nice number to get you negative two, it's not gonna happen. You would have to use fractions, which we're not gonna do. So if you look at the y's, can I multiply by 10 to get 20? Yeah, two. So let's do that. I'm gonna multiply this entire thing by two. And again, I wanna be ultra, ultra organized. So I'm gonna rewrite everything. <laughs> We got negative 7x minus 20y 
equals negative 14. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4x. 2 times positive 10 is positive 20y. 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. We're good to go. Now, your best case scenario mathematically is the coefficients that you're trying to be the same if they're opposite. So if one's positive and one is negative. Um, usually the math works out a lot more um, nice. Um, there's, usually, there's usually less errors that you're going to make. But again, it's your choice. If you want both numbers to be uh, negative 20, you could have multiplied the bottom equation by negative 2, right? Because just putting a negative sign negates everything. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So negative 7, so we're going to add, right? We're going to add, actually, let me make this a little bit more organized. Not be a hypocrite. All right, cool. So, oh, I didn't want to do that. You're ruining it. It's ruined. All right. Sick. All right, so I'm going to add both equations. Negative 7x plus negative 4x is negative 11x. Now, here's, here's the best part. Negative 20y plus positive 20y you're adding opposites of the same number, meaning they're the same number. One is negative, one is positive. When you do that, they add to zero, which means they go away. Bam. Equals negative 14 plus negative 8 is negative 22. You should be ultra relieved because when you divide both sides by negative 11 on both sides, I said that twice, you get an ultra nice number which x equals negative 22 divided by negative 11. A negative divided by a negative is positive, and 22 divided by 11 is 2. Okay. Now, to finish this off, all we got to do is substitute back into one of the equations. So I solved for x. Look at the equations. Is either one easier? Eh, not really. Um, so I'm going to choose the second one for fun. So. 10y plus 4 equals 2x, but x is 2, so I'm going to replace x with 2, and you get 10y plus 4 equals 4. We want to solve for y, subtract 4 on both sides, and you get 10y is equal 4 minus 4, 0. Divide by 10, and y equals zero. Now, are we done? Nah, we got to write it as a coordinate point. So, I don't know why I chose the same color. So, x is two, y is zero. All right, so that's it. Ultra long, um, but let's kind of just do um, a case in point. All right, solving systems, all right? You want to line up the um, you want everything in standard form. So all your x's, your y's, your equal signs, and their constants. You want to multiply the equations so that one of your variables match. You want to eliminate one of the variables, solve for the variable, plug it back in, substitute it back in. Right? In the end, you get a coordinate point. To check if that coordinate point works, you substitute that back into both equations. All right? Um, that's it. Elimination, I'm going to tell you, is a challenge. Um, you've got to be really, really good with using your calculator, um, being good with, you know, making sure you know how you're adding positive and negative numbers. You got to be careful. Like me, I made a mistake when I was practicing some of these questions, and it took me forever to figure out my answer. You got to be careful. All right. So make sure you come to office hours. Um, any kind of extra help, please make sure you email us, myself, Ms. James, Ms. Fu. Um, and yeah, I hope you have a great rest of your day. See you later, everyone.